Welcome everybody, my name is Michael and today we're discussing about FTX has officially scrapped their plans to restart their crypto exchange. It is no longer a proposition. In fact, they have decided let's repay back all the customers supposedly in full. Now, this doesn't mean they're going to get the money tomorrow. It's probably going to be another couple of years, similar to Mt. Gox. And by in full, there's also, similar to Mt. Gox, are they going to get what they lost or are they going to get the accurate values of their tokens? For some tokens, they may be less than what you lost. In those cases, obviously, you should get what the total amount of money that you lost. But in other cases, such as in Bitcoin and usually not the meme coins and crap coins, a lot of these tokens have gone up in value since FTX fell down. <coughs> Case in point, Solana. So what do you do? In Mt. Gox, you had a lot of people make more money. And Mark Capellis, the main CEO, also came out. Yes, he did spend a little time in jail, but he made a lot of money thanks to Bitcoin rising. In this case, though, it's looking to be more like they're just going to get back what they lost. There's going to be a lot of legal fees that also have to be paid. Millions and millions of dollars for the top law firms in the world. But let's go into the details. The CEO, John J. Ray III, has said he exhausted all of his options to find investors uh, to restart FTX 2.0. Now, they would have rebranded. They probably would have used a different name. But no one is willing to go deep into this. And in this case, there's hundreds of millions of dollars that have been sunk into other assets, into other companies that unfortunately are no longer valued. Or maybe they're just trash, to be honest, in the first place. FTX made some really bad investments. Uh, whether that's crypto companies, whether that's outside of crypto, there was some weird stuff going on with FTX. And people don't want anything to do with it. There was way too much news attention. And any billionaire or any company, that's bad PR for them. And what happens if they lose hundreds of millions of dollars? It's a lot of capital that's needed. So FTX has said, thanks to... Solana increasing things to other properties, increasing assets. Right now, they have enough money to pay back all customers in full. But the caveat is this is based off of the petition date. So since there was initially a two-year period, essentially, yes, a lot of assets, a lot of tokens did go down in value. And the petition date does mean that a lot of investors aren't going to feel like they were paid in full. Petition date means that maybe they might get 50% of what they were expecting. But based off of those values, supposedly, whatever the tokens are valued at, we're talking about billions of dollars here, but everybody should get their money back. So once everything is approved by the judge, which is certainly heading that way, the U.S. Bankruptcy Court will require claimants to submit proof that they did lose money, which also means if you don't have proof, you may not get your money back. And that's tricky because I was a crypto investor for many years who have held a, on a lot of platforms which simply don't exist anymore. There were some cases where it was five figures, some losses. Now, in this case, it was losses. It wasn't, you know, the bankruptcy. It wasn't similar to FTX where there was crime involved and, hey, I'll get the money back. I, I knew the money was lost. It was my mistake. I made trading mistakes. But for taxes, it gets a little tricky. It's like, well, okay, you did lose this money, but where's the proof? Some of these cryptocurrency exchanges are gone. So did I claim everything I lost? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't even know. Personally, I don't know the true scope of all the tokens that I've lost in value. I'm guessing it's, it's a pretty close number, but maybe I'm thousands of dollars off. And in that case, that's thousands of dollars that could be saved on taxes. Just, just for that one example there. So in this case, someone may have lost $50,000, of which maybe they can only prove $10,000 of that. Well, they just lost $40,000 because the guy next door thankfully took screenshots or a video or I don't know the exact proof and how they will go about verifying everything. Maybe there's data on the platform that certain lawyers will be able to fight for, especially if we're talking about millions of dollars. But, you know, with FTX imploding, around $15 million 15 million people worldwide were impacted by this implosion. Anywhere from 30 to $35 billion was lost. Now, yes, this is FTX and the following, 
you know, chaos that ensued. But you have millions of FTX impacted customers who now this is going to be a huge years long process where people are going to be fighting to try and get as much money back. And not everybody's going to be happy because maybe, you know, some of these tokens, they probably lost 90 percent of their value up until, boom, you know, that period where the bankruptcy was filed. So it's something it's not going to make everybody happy, but not everyone I'm, to be honest, very few people wanted FTX 2.0. I mean, who would have trusted FTX again? So even though it's under different management, it, it still is a company that's associated with a lot of really bad things. It's kind of like Comcast rebranding to Xfinity or Time Warner Cable rebranding. I mean, there, there's just a bunch of this stuff, you know. Spectrum, ooh. <laughs> you're, you're still the same devil, you know, in disguise. With everything going on right now, Sam Bankman freed... We'll find out his decision, whether he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison within the next couple of weeks. And recently, uh, earlier this month, there was news that with SBF, they're not going to charge him for the other. Uh, there was going to be another court case, but it's just a waste of taxpayer funds because at this point, whether he gets, you know, 50 years in prison or 100 or 200 or 300, it's it's pointless. It's just it's going to be a waste of taxpayer money. Effective Ventures, a British charity, is also returning almost $27 million, $26.8 million following uh, that they settled with FTX. They are a nonprofit supporting altruism, which Sam Bankman fried was a big fan of. And FTX is trying to get money from pretty much every source you can think of. And there's a little smile on my face because there's one source where it's a little tricky. You know, there, it, this is the most controversial out of all the donations. It's the political donations, you know. But there's a lot of ways FTX is trying to get their money back. Whether it is, hey, these tokens went up or, hey, we donated a bunch of money or we did business with this one company, but there was something sketchy. And now, you know, a lot of these companies are going to be settling. And it is devastating for those uh, people who were involved. And, and for some of these places, it sucks. It's I've always had this question like, okay, if you're a charity and there's a criminal who you don't know is a criminal or, you know, this money came from a family member of that criminal or whatever, and five years later, uh, the money has to be clawed back by the government. It, it sucks. It, it's impacting a lot of people who had nothing to do with FTX or the investments of cryptocurrency. And it also is putting a bad stain on crypto. So SBF will not be facing an additional six charges that uh, there was supposed to be a second trial for. At this point, he was found guilty on many counts. And sentencing is just around the corner. Tomorrow is a new month, February. And tomorrow we'll be able to say next month we will know what's happening to SBF. March 28th. It's just a couple weeks away. A couple weeks right before the Bitcoin happening as well. So very exciting. Unfortunately, cryptocurrency has been impacted negatively. But we will recover. We already have recovered in many ways. And hopefully those who have lost money will be able to get that. Maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe in a couple of years, but eventually you'll get the money back. It also is a terrible thing to think about where in, in certain cases, you know, if it's an elderly client or if it's, you know, something something terrible happened to somebody. There's so many millions of customers. There's $8 billion that is supposed to return back to customers. That's a lot of money we're talking about. So much, in fact, that some of these customers, uh, just like in the case of Mt. Gox, they may not be alive to finally see their money coming back. And in some cases, it's life-changing amounts of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. Maybe they were rich during the crypto boom and you know they lost it all because it's kind of like a you know you put your money in a bank and yes, you shouldn't keep your money on an exchange, but you, you, you go put your money into a bank and turns out it falls and you know you had more than 250,000 FDIC and whatever, or the... Some some scam, you, you put it into a Ponzi scheme and, and that's it. And you lost everything and now you're in debt for the rest of your life. It, it's terrible to think about. But with that said, we have a lot of exciting stuff happening. By the way, the most exciting of which for this channel, we still have our Christmas tree. It will be going down very soon, although I miss Christmas. But I had my birthday. And with that, my lovely wife has helped me purchase Boom new computer we finally have it ladies and gentlemen this finally means we've upgraded from a very good computer which has certainly served its purpose 
This has been with me for over seven years. Unfortunately, I think actually close to eight years now. Unfortunately, it is a relic. <laughs> Trying to edit videos with this, I will still keep this computer. When I have enough money to replace the battery, I will. And then I have to replace the keyboard. And it certainly needs some work. It'll be the backup computer. But trying to edit videos when Final Cut crashes five times and it has problems even running Microsoft Excel, well, it certainly has served its purpose, unfortunately, uh, especially nowadays with, you know, 4K video and, and these file sizes becoming so big, it just trying to import crashes, not even talking about rendering. So now it's like, again, going from a clapped out Honda Civic or Hyundai to a Ferrari that's just so fast, you import videos, boom, boom, render, boom. Something that took me 30 minutes on that computer, now I did it in two minutes. Rendering, boom, everything's done, I can upload. And at the same time, I can use Photoshop for the thumbnails and everything, I can multitask again, woo, super exciting. What does this mean? We're gonna be making more content. You've finally been waiting for this moment. We're gonna be making more content, baby. And I have very exciting news that we are close to announcing. Uh, it's gonna be announced in the next couple of weeks here. It is only positive from here on out for the channel and hopefully for life as well. So thank you to everybody who's been watching. I really appreciate all of you guys. Uh, we are going to do everything we can to turn this channel into a powerhouse and hopefully start investing again <laughs> next year, maybe, or this year. But uh, with that said, thanks for watching. Have a good one. And my other channel is popping off. It's at 125 subscribers now. Ooh, we're getting there. So if you can't, if you're interested in car sales or Volvo or you just want to support my other channel, please head on over there. If you can, subscribe. If not, you know, at least, you know, watch a couple videos or like or something. Really appreciate that. Thanks so much. And you guys have a good rest of your day. Take care.